we're going to answer some questions from the public, from the holy so public. Say, you look at people, you try to see Shem, how do you see that? So, first of all, like we said before, our friend is asking, when you look at your friend, how are you going to see Hashem? How actually are you going to see Hashem inside of him? The answer is, like we said before, the faith is in the night. If I'll tell you that this bottle contains water, you don't need to believe me. It's obvious, you can see it, you don't need me for that. But if I'll tell you that inside that water there is a certain flavor, peach, apple, lemon, for that you need to believe. Why? Because you cannot see. So if now you look at a person, you cannot see his soul. You see his eyes, his eyebrows, his hair, his face, his body. You cannot see the soul. You need to believe that he's got a soul. And then when you believe in Ta'aminu Ta'amenu, you will see it. When you will believe that he's a holy soul, even if you cannot see it, then you will see it. For that you need to put the effort. I want to see his soul. I'm going to look for the good that he's got inside of him. The good that he's got inside of him, that's the roots of his soul. That's the light of Hashem. Because there is no good except of Torah. There is no good except of a righteous man. There is no good except of Hashem. Three things cause good. So if there is something good in him, so it's the, source, the source of it is, 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 is divine. So when you see the good, you recognize the good, you actually saw Hashem. You saw the soul. Yes. Great. How a person gonna understand what's his mission in a world that is confusing us so much that people are suffering, you have so much sorrow and death and pain. How a person gonna find his purpose? So, first of all, to know who you are, it's a very easy thing. I'm saying it in many of my lectures. It's a very easy thing to understand who you are. Because if you like to hear to classic music, so you know that that's what you like to do. If you like to eat chulent in Shabbos morning, you know if you are like to eat kubane, you know who you are. If you like to hear black music, if you like to learn Gemara, you know who you are. You like chocolate bars in the middle of the night. That's what you, you like riding bicycles, you like fishing in the lake. You know who you are, right? Great. Everyone knows who they are. What's the problem? To understand that it's the will of Hashem, that's the problem. To believe that it's amazing, that's the mission. You don't need to do anything. Everything is so, it's just under your nose. Who you need to help? My neighbors? No, you don't know them. You need to help your neighbors, the one that you hear that is fighting with the husband. So you just need to wake up and knock on their door and to sit with them and to talk and to bring them fish for Shabbat and to go and to send the kids. That's what you need to do. It's easy, you know what you need to do. But what's the problem? We're afraid to believe in ourselves that we're on a mission. You know exactly who is poor in your block, and you know exactly who is sick in his mind and needs some love and support and hours of conversations into the night. You know what your mission is, but you don't believe that you're able, capable of making wonders in this world. But if you will believe in yourself, you will heal sick, and you will support the poor, and you will build houses, and you're going to bring redemption to your community, and then to your town, and then to your state, and then to the wide world. That was your answer. Yes, please. You want me to ask you a question? Yes, please. He saved you. <laughs> yes. With this unfortunate, sick world that we live in, with all the craziness that's going on, First of all, you can go crazy and then you come back. It's not there, like <laughs> <laughs> you don't have guarantee on your sanity. How are you supposed to come as people who are on the, uh, you know, who are who never, who are never on the dark? I am. I never. I never went and convinced people to believe that it's all for the good, that you just need to praise Hashem and to thank Hashem. I never did it. There are many rabbis that are doing that. Me, myself, as a person, I never did it. And even if I will mention those verses, there are verses, it's allowed to mention them, they are true. But when they are true, 
in a certain time, for a certain person, in a certain situation. Not in every situation you can tell a person it's all for the good. A mother that lost her child cannot hear that it's for the good. She will take your face off if she's going to start explaining to her that it was good. She wants her baby back. There's nothing to talk about. She just needs love and understanding and compassion and support. And you want to that her soul, her nefesh, her spirit will be healed, go and pray for her. You need to learn how to calculate your words when to use which verse and what to say to every individual and every person. You know why I, and everyone will testify on that, that in classes that I give, many, many people feel that same feeling that I spoke directly to them. How many people felt that in class? We don't need to count, right? More than 10, 15 people now lift their hands, okay? Why? Because I cried to Hashem for hours, for hours, and maybe hundreds of hours. And I'm not lying and not exaggerating. I was crying to Hashem, begging to Hashem in Barach, help me to help your children. I begged. I cried for that. I was literally crying to Hashem in Barach to give me the power because I realized that I'm worthless without Hashem's help, without Hashem's support. So Hashem gave me that gift that today He is doing the work for me. You think that I'm a mind reader? I would be a billionaire if I would be a mind reader. I'm not. I'm just a person that is coming to such humble place when I'm talking that I know that you deserve to see the light that I experienced because you're for sure not worse than me. I came from such a dark place in my life and Hashem revealed such pleasant light of, of faith to me that I realized from that that it belongs to everyone. So now with that understanding I can come and tell everyone exactly that they are worthy and, and able to enjoy the pleasant of Hashem because I did. And not because I'm unique, just because Hashem loves and cares. So when you really want to help your friend, you will know how to help him. Because you're going to call Hashem and going to tell him, Hashem, I'm lost, Hashem, I don't know what to do, my friend needs me, and I don't have the advice, and whatever I tell him is going wrong, please give me the right advice, and if you're going to say it from your heart, you will find the advice. Please ask a question. Everyone are looking back. Yes. Also, also that he wanted many things. <laughs> Hashem wants women to be modest. The Shulchan Aruch is saying women need to cover their heads. Yeah, Married the women. You're asking. That community is counting on a holy tradition that based on holy pillars of righteous people that guide them to follow the tradition of their ancestors. And they're obligated to that in a tradition, in a chain, of links of chains that cannot be broken. And they're obligated to their tradition. And the other section are 100% obligated to follow their own teachers and rabbis and tradition. Now, there is only one person in this world that can choose, and it's a Baal Tshuva. A Baal Tshuva is not obligated to a certain tradition. He can choose the one that he feels more related to, connected to. Let's say an Ashkenazi guy that grew up in a certain neighborhood, community, that he doesn't feel related to the Ashkenazi um, um, tradition. So he finds himself now waking up in Tshuva in his Sephardi Shul, and he likes that rabbi, and the community fits for him. He can follow the Minagim of that place. He can choose on his own the path to serve Hashem. So now 
as people that wants to serve Hashem, we just need to follow the righteous ones that are leading us. And it's very important to look for a rabbi that is a holy man, that is really, you see in his eyes that he cares about you, that he cares about your children, not someone that can like destroy your life in a second if you didn't honor him enough or whatever. To look for real righteous leaders that will lead us, and then to do kichol asherirucha, whatever they're going to tell you to do, you need to follow with mimut simplicity to follow their advice. Yes. Please. Do you understand correctly that the Rabbi is saying that we should help the less affiliated than ourselves and try to do kiyuv to them? Is that correct? Yes, but. The verse that is saying to us, that you need to love your friend like you love yourself, means to care about him as much as you care about yourself. That if you paid your bills, your electricity bills, so you cannot not care about your neighbor that haven't paid his. But when you're able to take care of him and to help him, only after you took care of yourself. Really, if you haven't paid your bills yet, you cannot go and pay his bills. You're not obligated to pay his bills first. First of all, you need to heal yourself. And after that, you received some healing, some wisdom, some understanding, some stability in life. You need to use that to give the same feeling, the same pleasant that you have in your life to your friend, that he will feel the same as you. So, uh, this is, of course, the opinion of uh, Barashem Tov and the... Chabadniks are very successful in this, in this career. But then there are those uh, Rabbanim and those Hasidim that say exactly the opposite. That we just need, we do the right thing ourselves and then look at us, watch us and follow. That we should not go out there and try to do kiruf with them. That's not what we should do. It's, it's like if, if somebody is not affiliated and not, not uh, religious enough, as if to say, if you're not learned people, as if, if they are um, standing in a um, very bad order place, and if you want to go help them, okay, fine, come on. But the way to, the way to do it really is that you should go, go out. Yeah, you should you should, you should be in a, you should put, try to raise yourself to a level that they should watch you and learn and follow you, not that you should go out there and try to get another. I agree with you in 100%. I feel that that's our mission and also it's written on Am Israel, on all of our nation, that in the future to come, when Beit HaMikdash Shlishi will be rebuilt, so in that day, we will become to be Mamlechet Kohanim Vegoi Kadosh. We will become to be a nation, a nation of Kohanim. To do what? To help all the nations that will come to the Temple all the nations will come to worship Hashem over there in the third temple and we will serve Hashem over there to guide all the nations and all human beings how to serve Hashem. So that's the purpose of our creation to light and to shine to everyone that will ask and to know Hashem we will give them water and we will feed them and we will teach them the wisdom of the real will of Hashem. That's well, the purpose of our being. Eventually, of course, it's going to be the, the same. Uh, we're going to be saying the same thing. But I'm just saying, how about those that the approach is not go out there and do you? You need to bring them to my classes and I'm going to take care of them. <laughs> I'll give you my schedule for next week. Bring them one community after the other. Yes. Yes. Spank them. Yes, please. So, there are a few things that I can say about that, and I don't think that it's, it, it's very individual, and every person got something else that he's going through, but Hashem Itbarach himself cannot be in the same place with a person that is arrogant and selfish. A person must be humble to have the ability to experience the beauty and the glory of Hashem. So now, Hashem is telling us that the Shekhinah Kedoshah is hovering above the head of a sick person. If you see a person that is sick, 
You need to understand that that person is going with the Shekhinah Kedusha above him, escorting him, protecting him, supporting him. Also the word Chole is used also for the person that is sick and also to say on Hashem Barach that he is dancing with the righteous people. People that are being sick, they very fast against their will become very humble. Because very fast they understand that they're in the hands of heaven and only Hashem can heal them and doctors are not helping and medicines are not helping and only Hashem can heal me. When you have that wisdom, the closeness that you experience to Hashem is so huge and so great and so inspiring that actually people that are going through pain and sorrow are very, very lucky because they're losing their interest in this world and they start thinking about the purpose of life and they are getting very humble and very nice and, and patience and, and they feel the pain of other people and they become very righteous in a way. So no one wants that sorrow but after the fact if Hashem chose that path for a certain person to make him sick it's only because that he wants to reveal his kindness on that person. But like I said, every case is an individual and different and we need to speak with every person and to give him the right advice to his situation. Last question, please. Um, Almost you. last. Uh, also, uh, a few years ago, uh, I also came to very dark. Can you bless me to do Tshuva as well, to join you? I'm doing everything with you. Okay. I never feel like I'm doing enough, and I love Jewish people so much, and I teach them, you know, I'm learning now, and I, um, I'm doing everything I can, but uh, I never feel like it's enough, and I don't know if, if that's, I don't know if that's going to lead to a good place, or it's, it's going to destroy me. And I, so I'll tell you, and I'll answer you, that's 100% Yetzirah. 100% Yetzirah. To think in any way that you're not good, that you're not good enough, it's 100% lie. Who made you? Hashem made you. How Hashem made you? Hand made by Hashem must be perfect. That's it. Now, you want to keep Torah mitzvot? Great, do as much as you can. There is a halakha for a person that woke up at 11 a.m. There is also a halakha on how to do tshuva on waking up at 11 a.m. The halakha doesn't say only you need to wake up and do the nets. No, that's where the halakha finished. No, that's not where the halakha finished. The halakha gives you a solution in every case. After every failure, you have the advice of tshuva, how to stand up back on your feet and to come back to Hashem and to tell Hashem, please, and help me, and I don't want to fall to that place again. You can always do something positive to build yourself. Even a person that killed someone, chas v'shalom, he still got something to do to come back to Hashem. If he will go now and save youth, young people, and going to guide them not to carry weapon, and not to go violence, and not to do drugs, and not to go to uh, the drink, like he will go to those poor neighborhoods and sit with the young guys and will save people's life. So the fact that he murdered will be fixed. Even though that he killed a life, that he took a life by saving another person's life. So instead of chasing ourselves and blaming ourselves on how much I lost and how much I, I missed, if you lost, let's say, 20 years of your life and you lost all of the Shabbatot in between because you never kept Shabbat, so now how can you fix it? Every Shabbat that will come from now on that you will keep will not going to pay on the last ones. It's your anyway you're obligated to do. But if you will take a person that is not keeping Shabbat and you're going to give him advice that will make him keep Shabbat for the next 20 years, so now you have 20 years of Shabbatot that that person keeps on your merit. And if you will convince 10 people to keep Shabbat, 
So on that it's written, Ein lo ra'ata elokim zulatecha. You can never imagine how much you can achieve in this world. Gold and diamond thrown on the streets, in the streets. Pearls and, and rubies. Just collect them, just pick them up. Say to one person, I love you. Say to part one person, I care about you. Hashem loves you. You look so good. Something is good. What? You've been changed. Cheer them up. Give them a reason to live. They're going to follow you like they found a treasure. And then you will take them to Beta Midrash and teach them halachot and help them to do it bodedut and to talk to Hashem and to open up and give them life. How does one come from Right. The question comes up, you know, does one, <coughs> does one uh, relent and go back a little bit to bring the other ones forward, or does one just shatters the whole thing and moves forward and totally destroys and gets something to think about it? So, so Bezat Hashem, I'll answer you. And I'll tell you, like, I, like we spoke about that sick person, that every individual got a different story, it's a different case. So also here we cannot set a rule and to say, no, you must do this, you must do that. Even if you will go to a rabbi that is very strict, that is following the book, only reads from the book, also he will find many, many reasons to let you be light and to be more mekel, and to take it more easy, and to wait, and to build yourself as a process. It's not black or white. There is no black or white in this situation. But, and I'll tell you the story and the solution to solve every problem in our life. God gave us the tool to recognize the truth inside of ourselves. Divrei emet nikarim, you can recognize words of truth. If I will tell you something about yourself, you will know if that thing that I told you about yourself is right or wrong. How are you going to know? Because Hashem made you with that ability to recognize the truth. If I'm going to tell you that you stole $100 from me, you won't feel bad because you know that you never took my money. So you won't feel bad. But if you took, and I will tell you, look, between us, you know that you took. Even if you will have the best excuse and the answer to prove it to me that you didn't steal it, still, still stolen the money, but really inside you will know the truth. Even if in the end you're going to convince me that I forgot the money somewhere else, you will know that you stolen that money from me. Why? Because you, inside of you, you know the truth. So, on every situation in life that you don't know the answer, and listen carefully, it's important. On everything that you still don't know the answer, it's only and only because you haven't asked it with honesty. You haven't asked that question strong enough and you were not willing to know the truth. Because when you will ask, you will know. If you need to drop your family and to go, you will know. And if you must wait until they are going to do tshuva and come with you, you will know. And no one can give you an advice on that. That's written between the lines. It doesn't read in the verses. That is the wisdom of the soul that can understand and can find the truth between the cracks. Can find the will of Hashem in Barach in the thickest darkness of them all. Because the truth will be recognized. So if you will seek for the truth and not for a quick and easy solution how to benefit your life, you will know the truth. Thank you very much. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.